Hello, South Suburban. Welcome to this week's edition of Sermon Scraps. Okay, so yesterday we were talking about joy, and we talked about a variety of different things to kind of define joy and, and help us figure out joy. And and one of the ways that we talked about getting connected and remaining connected with God through joy is through prayer. And obviously we didn't have enough time to really dive into prayer because it's an interesting passage that we get in John chapter 16, verses uh, 23 and 24 in particular, when Jesus says, In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. So, you know, there's a number of different things here that, that we want to unpack and look at for a minute because this really begs a lot of questions. So before we get into that, though, I want to just start with in, in verse 23 when Jesus says very truly. Now, this is the NIV version. Other translations say truly, truly. When you get that double amen, this means that you are needing to pay attention to what Jesus says because this is a big, heavy thing. Okay? Very truly, so truly, truly, amen, amen, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. So, one of the questions that comes for prayer when you look at these passages is, so can I ask for anything? And you would look at this and you would say, well, this is telling me that I can ask and it's going to give me whatever I ask. But, but that's not what it's saying here. See, there's that little caveat thing, in my name. In my name doesn't imply that we're doing it for our own benefit, for our own pleasure, for our own desires. Instead, what we're actually doing is we're we're doing it um, in the name of Jesus. We're doing it on behalf of Jesus. So when we say that we're doing this and when we're calling on Jesus' name to do these things, we're praying for the mission of Jesus. And what was Jesus' mission? Well, his mission was very clear. His mission was to do the will of the Father which means that that is our mission in turn. So when we pray to God and when we're asking for God for things in the name of Jesus, what we should be asking for are ways to accomplish and carry out the mission of God. And that's a very important part of focus when it comes to prayer. See, a lot of times we go through the the adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication aspect of prayer, uh, but a lot of times those are inwardly focused things when we when we say supplication or when we give confession we're talking about the things that we've done wrong and when we uh, supplicate to god when we ask god for things a lot of times they have to do with our own problems and dealing with our own issues well what about the mission of god see when we pray we need to make sure that we're taking time to pray over and regarding to the mission of god in other words god Change my character. Turn me into the man that you want me to be so that I might carry out your purposes. God, I have a co-worker that I've been wanting to visit with about you. I feel convicted. Give me the courage and open my eyes for the opportunity. And this is where Jesus says, God will give you whatever you ask. If you're willing to be made willing, then God is willing to take these things. Now, there's another side of this as well, because a lot of ways this has kind of become a, a, a Protestant mantra, if you will. We, we end all of our prayers in Jesus' name. Now, that is a very appropriate way to end prayer, but we also have to understand that that, that in itself is not going to grant the request of the prayer. Just like I said a minute ago, it has to do with making sure that we're carrying out God's mission. And so when we pray, we need to make sure that our prayers are appropriate prayers. They're not prayers of selfishness. They're not prayers of, of, of self-seeking that will advance ourselves. Remember, this is to pray for the advancement of the kingdom. Remember, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven out of Matthew chapter 6. When he teaches the Lord's Prayer in verses 9 through 11, that's what he's saying. We want to advance God's kingdom. We're not just in it for our own selfish gain, our own selfish desires. So when we say verse 23, truly, truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. That is helping us to understand. Now, there's another part of this, because in verse 24, Jesus says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Now, this shift is, or this marks a pretty significant and dramatic shift in prayer. Now remember, up until this point, what did prayer look like in the Old Testament? Uh, prayer was often done through a conduit, through a resource. We would have uh, the high priest that would offer prayers and sacrifices on behalf of the people. You would have a prophet or a mediator that would prayer that would offer prayer and supplication 
to God. But now we're getting the great high priest, as it says in Hebrews, the new one in the order of Melchizedek, which means that, that this is going to be something different. Okay, It's no longer something that's going to be required to go to the temple and to get prayer for. Instead, we get to pray to Jesus. Now, Jesus told them just a minute ago that he's going to be going away. And yet, he tells the disciples, you should still pray in my name. So, up to this point, they've had Jesus there. He's been facilitating. He's been leading. He's been teaching them to do these things. But now Jesus is saying, I'm going to go away, but I want you to still continue to pray in my name. And I want you to ask whatever it is that you need to carry out my mission so that your joy will be complete. Now, we talked a lot about joy yesterday. and We talked about that joy is something that comes from God through Jesus. This includes prayer. So when we pray, and we pray through our conduit, through Jesus, through that high priest, the high priest that's no longer in the temple here on earth, of course there's no temple anymore, but back then there was, when we do these things, we are allowing the joy that Jesus has in carrying out God's mission. He talks about that in John chapter 15. We talked about this yesterday. The joy that Jesus has in serving other people, we then get that same joy because if we're praying to carry out the mission of God, what is the mission of God? It's to save humanity. It's to sacrifice for humanity. That's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus' mission was to, to, to share the gospel himself and bring about life change. And so our mission, if we're praying the same mission that Jesus is, then becomes that same thing. So the joy that Jesus experienced with the sacrificial love, we also get to experience with sacrificial love. Now, we talked about this. This is, this is an emotion, but it's not the same kind of emotion as happiness or sadness, which are inward-focused emotions. Joy is an emotion that is supposed to be used outward. And that's exactly what these prayers are asking for. These prayers are to be outwardly focused prayers. These are not prayers to be inwardly focused. Now, we need to make sure we understand that when we pray, we're praying in a way that they had never known before. You see, they had never had the intimate relationship. Remember, God told uh, the Israelites when right after the Exodus, don't even come close to my mountain because this is holy ground and you will be killed. We now are able to approach God in a way and in methods that we never had before. And that's one of the reasons why the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples uh, in Matthew was, was so powerful and so life-changing is because it allowed people to approach God that supposedly weren't allowed to approach God before. And this is one of the areas that, unfortunately, we have some of our other churches in historically have have placed mediators in the way, have placed priests and other people in the way. We don't have to do that anymore. We now have direct access to God through the Father. It's like it's like those movies. Whenever you see a guy walk up and he's 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 getting into some kind of club or some kind of special thing, and he knocks on the door and a guy opens it up and says, What do you want? And and the guy says, like, the flops he sent me, or moops he sent me, or Buzz sent me, or Joe sent me, or whatever the guy's name is. And then suddenly the door magically opens because that name opens the door to the possibilities. And that's exactly what happens when we pray in the name of Jesus to accomplish the mission of God. It's like opening the door to a whole new realm of possibilities, things that we may not have even imagined before. But now we get all because we were willing to pray in Jesus' name and ask on behalf of the mission of God. All right, so last week... Uh, Mike talked about peace. We talked about joy this week. Next week, we're going to talk about love, and then we'll complete our Advent series out with hope uh, because all of these are interchangeable, or, or, or are not interchangeable, but they're all connected and intertwined. That's a better word. Intertwined and meshed together. So we talked about peace. We talked about joy. Now, t now next Sunday, we're going to talk about love. Hope to see you there.